let's talk about the negation of quantified statements. So, imagine I gave you the statement, all cats are gray, and I said, that's a true statement. You would probably say, it's not true. And how would you convince me that it's not true? What would you say back to me? What would be the negation of all cats are gray? What would be a true sentence, which is the negation of this guy? Because this is false. Maybe pause the video and have a think about that. Okay. Well, all cats are gray is obviously false. You can see that. Say Garfield the cat is a cat. Garfield is orange. So it's not true that all cats are gray. So what is true is, well, if I said all cats are gray, you would say, no, you're wrong. There's at least one cat that isn't gray. So the, the negation, let's call this P just to give it a name. If P is all cats are gray, the negation of P, not P is, there's at least one cat that isn't gray. And again, you could write this in a bunch of different ways. Instead of saying there's at least one, you could say there exists a cat that isn't gray. Something like that. Let's write this out using logical formulas just to, um, to get a feel for the form of how the negation goes. Okay, so let's do some definitions here. Let's call C. This is going to be the set of all cats. Okay. And then let's say P of little c is going to be the open sentence C is gray. Okay? So then I could write P as for all elements of the set big C, and I call those elements a little c just to give them a name, p of c, so c is gray. So all cats are gray can be written like this. For all things in the set c, which is all cats, so for all cats, c is gray, the cat is gray. So that's a way of expressing all cats are gray in logic. And the negation, well, the negation of P not P is going to be in logic. Well, there is at least one cat, so there exists a cat that isn't gray. So if it's not gray, well, it's going to be the negation. So this is C is not gray. All right, so we'll put in the negation of P of C. So look what happened here. This is what I want to point out. When you're negating a quantified statement, we took this universal quantifier and we changed it to an existential. And we took the open sentence here, I'll do this in a different color, took this open sentence and we negated it. Let's look at another example, same idea. Let's do the same thing. So here we go. There is a number n in the integer, so there is an integer where the square is negative. Okay. Let's write that down in logic. So there is a number n, so there exists. This is an existential quantifier. There is. So there exists an n in the integers such that 
um, n squared is negative. I can just write, rather than kind of defining p of uh, n being n squared is negative, you could just write n squared is negative here. So here's my open sentence. That's fine. So there exists an integer n such that n squared is less than 0. n squared is negative. Let's call that expression, I guess, p. And then the negation of p, well, let's think about this in words. Maybe pause the video now and see how you can negate this in words first. First of all, I will tell you that this is indeed a false statement. There isn't a number um, n in the integers where the square is negative. So see, what's another way of expressing it rather than just saying it's not true that there is a number and etc. So see if you can reword that maybe with a different quantifier. Okay, now that you're back, the way I would reword it, I would say all integers are such that, all integers n, I guess, are such that the square isn't negative. So if it's not negative, what does that mean? It is either greater than or equal to zero. Remember, the negation of negative not being negative doesn't mean that it's positive. It means that it's not negative. It's either positive or zero. Okay, so the negation of this is going to be, well, all integers n are such that n squared is not negative. They're greater than or equal to zero. So again, let's write this in logic. So in, in a logical formula, we have all integers n. So for all n that are integers, we have n squared is greater than or equal to zero. And note here, This n squared is greater than or equal to zero is the negation of our open sentence above. n squared is less than zero. Remember, as a reminder, open sentences are such that for certain values, um, if you plug in those values, it's true. And for those other values, it's false. And the negation swaps the truth values. So, for example, if I put in zero here, zero is not less than zero. So zero makes this false. But here, if I put in 0, 0 is greater than or equal to 0, so 0 makes this true. And that's going to be true for every integer n. The truth value is opposite in these two expressions. So, hopefully we noticed a pattern here. We kind of did the same thing intuitively. Well, we started with this existential quantifier, and we changed it to a universal. We kept the domain the same. Domain stayed the same. And we negated the open sentence. So we can look at this in terms of some rules. In fact, we're going to talk about what these rules are right now. That's basically exactly what we said. Let's scroll up here. So. If we wanted to negate a quantified statement in general that just has one quantifier, we'll deal with uh, more than one quantifier in the next video. But all we do is we switch the quantifier to the other one. So it's we switch a universal to an existential or switch an existential to universal. We keep the domain the same and we negate the open sentence. And the open sentence is also called the predicate. That's another way of expressing it. So. Let's write these down for posterity here. So the negation of a for all statement is going to be 
there exists an x in the same domain, in whatever set s, such that the open sentence is negated. So not p of x. And the same thing for the negation of an existential. You just flip the existential to a universal quantifier and keep the same domain and negate the predicate or negate the open sentence. And that's really how to negate any of these um, quantified statements. They just have one quantifier and one variable. Um, remember, for open sentences, sometimes they can be kind of complicated. They can have ands and ors or nots or whatever in there. So when you negate it, you might have to do a little bit of logical simplification using our rules from topic four to make it into an expression that's a lot easier to deal with rather than it's not true that p of x. That's kind of a, a cheap way of doing it. It really doesn't um, get to the heart of what the negation means.